You ready for a Christian story? You all are here at church, right? So you like Christian stories. Do you like adventure stories? What kind of adventure story do you think Christians would like? What would you what would you be questing for if you were a Christian? What would you want to find? You want some people that are alive, right? What, what, would you would you want to search for treasure? Would you want to have treasure? What kind of treasure would you want to have? You have lots of answers, don't you? What kind of treasure would you want to have? God, Jesus. Okay, so we're going to tell a story about searching for a great treasure, right? And I'm really happy to get to share this story with you because it's a story that I wrote with some of my friends and. And, and we also made pictures, right? So it's got a picture book, and I think it's a little bit of a long story, so we're gonna start with the first part of it. And if you want to know the full story, we have copies for your parents to get for you in our shop, right? So you can help the Canons by buying it from our shop. But I want you to know this story because I really wrote it for you, okay? So can you look at the, do you see the picture? Does anybody look close up, what do you see in the picture? A whale, there's a whale in the picture, good. Animals are holding up the whale. There's some animals, they're holding up a whale. Do you, can you see what kind of animals those are? A bird. There's a bird, and they're bears, right? Okay, so there's bears in this story, and there's penguins, and there's, what do you see at the top there? Do you see a, do you see a creature at the top? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, maybe it's an eagle, maybe it's something else. Do you wanna find out? We'll find, well, we'll, fi we'll find out, all right? So let me, let me start telling the story for you. Okay, and it first has, because this is a Christian story, we're going to start with a bit of scripture to help you understand what we're searching for, right? So the quest that we're going on here. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 4, 6. So we have light, we have knowledge, and the face of Christ. A prologue. You know what a prologue is? You mean know what a prologue is? Yep. Yeah? It's the preview of the story, right? So I'm going to read to you the prologue, which is going to give you a hint about what this story is about and it's gonna tell you what to listen for when I start reading the, the, the story proper, right? So it's like a play, it's like Shakespeare's plays, they have prologues, and what's gonna be maybe a little bit tricky and a little bit hopefully fun is the, po the, the, the story is written as a poem, so it's gonna sound like maybe old timey, but it's a new poem, so it's gonna also sound like now, right? So we're gonna get that. Okay, I need you all to listen to the prologue so you know what, what's coming. Bears are in it. These are bears. We sing a tale of bears who sought a gem, a pirate's treasure lost for centuries. Three brown and one translucent bear left home to sail to where the ice wall meets the sea. An albatross bore messages of hope. A panda bear needs rescue from the seals. The penguins guard the treasure in the ice, a gemstone of the heavens without price. Lord, help us with our story to be told. The animals are ready to set out. Four brother bears, they stand before you bold. Their quest to find a gemstone in the south. Dread monsters, they fear not, nor icy cold. They want to know what life is all about. Adventure calls, they board their ship and sail. And thus with rhymes, we now begin our tale. Act one, the net. You see what's in the net? A fish. A fish. So you know what kind of net it is, right? It's going to be a fishing net. All right, here's the, here's the opening picture. You see what's at the top? It's a bird, right? So we're going to learn about the bird. Do you see what's down at the bottom by my fingers? Uh, yeah. A bear. Another bear. A this is a, a polar bear. This is a white bear. Okay, so do you know where polar bears live? Where do they live? They live where it's really cold, up in the north, and you know at, at the North Pole, right? So our story starts at the North Pole, 
And do you know what it's like up at the North Pole? Have you ever seen pictures of something called the, the Aurora? Remember, my story is called the Aurora Borealis. Do you know what that might be referring to? Yep, you. These lights in the sky, it's not the Borealis, it's the Aurora Borealis, and that's the northern lights, right? So we're going to start with a scene with the albatross and the polar bear and the northern lights. Okay, so here we go. The light was named in time before the spark, when yet it had no glass through which to shine. It seemed with joy to laugh into the dark, where air is thin and sky is crystalline. Bear Ulfilas peered at it from his bark, the world above refracting Celestine, like smoke that trailed into the dark abyss. To breach the ceiling of the world, he wished. He'd open heaven's curtain with his fist. With his wide paw, he dragged the air to rend like foggy breath within his palm, a mist. No bear can cup the northern lights, he lisped. An albatross onto the ice descends. It's Abner, whose white wings had sailed the winds to seek the world beyond the polar blinds. I actually missed a line in there, if you noticed. The, the rhyme was off a little bit. So there's a lot of big words in there. Do you know what crystalline is? Do you know what it says to think about the sky as crystalline? Like crystals, yeah? Like crystals in the air, they're all lined up. And we have um, the, the line I missed, Aurora's fume-like webs caught in his hand. Do you know what the northern lights look like? They're, yeah, do you know what they look like? They're green and purple, right? And if he's got his, he's got his big bear paw, and he's kind of playing with the light in the sky, right? And he wants to capture this light in his paw. Yep. They're orange. So the, the, the northern lights, they're all these different rainbow colors, right? Very, very beautiful. And he's lying there. You know what a bark is? A boat. OK, so it's like he's lying on an ice floe and a bark. Yeah? He's, got, he's, got, he's lying there on his boat, and he wants to capture. And here comes the albatross down on to the, the ice, and he's his friend, right? The bear's heart leapt to see his friend, the bird, a traveler whom no land could anchor long. Through monsoon tropics he had sailed assured, while bears had learned to cast their nets along the polar North Sea in their childhood fjord. The albatross would always talk in song, in shoals of harmony his words were caught. He's odd, that bird, or so Ophelis thought. But. Okay, and this is, this is a fancy stanza, right? So we're going to get a mystery here because the bird is bringing some messages, right? You think about what, when Noah sends out birds from the ark, right? What do the birds bring back? He sends out a raven first and he sends out a dove. If Noah sends a bird out from his ship, the birds are going to come back with information, right? And stories and, and tales of what they've seen. Well, albatross, the albatross, they can fly very, very far and very, very high. They're giant birds. They would cover like all of you if, <laughs> if one of what were sitting here. And the albatross has a story about what he's going to find in the north, in the south, right? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for the big mystery? But trilled the bird. Stars melt down south, you know, and at world's end they blaze with constant fire. For when the sun sinks under pale blue snow, the southern sky ignites like time's own pyre. Aurora strikes a chord that's deep and low, attuned with seraphim on emerald lyres, of burning crystals on the bow of rain. Lo, there was I last year upon Samhain. Anybody get what that image is? Maybe I'll ask the moms. Timia? <laughs> you maybe have to have studied a little bit of medieval imagery here. We've got seraphim. Do you know what seraphim are? You all are nodding. What are seraphim? They're angels. What do angels do? Make music? They, they sing? They have harps, right? So. Abner's describing Aurora strikes a chord that's deep and low. It's like the lights themselves are making music, 
Okay. What do you think Ophelia's thoughts about that? Think, uh, thinks about that. What does he say? What does the bear say? I knew it! Cried the bear. The earth is flat. Wait a minute. <laughs> I wish I had an airship to take wing. I'd fly up to the moon for real, don't laugh, to where the lights of time begin to sing. You'd never make it there and back. You're fat. You don't know north from south or what to bring. Your mother told you stories of the light, but you are too busy getting into fights. You're not getting into fights, are you? No, okay, good. So Abner wants to say, you want to go on this adventure, don't you, right? What do you think Ophelis is going to say to that taunt? You're too fat. You can't do it. You weren't listening when your mom told you stories. You want to see? What did Ophelis just do? He's just jumped. The bird took wing as one great paw lashed out. You're banned, shot Ophelis. Bird cocked an eye. No polar bears ever journeyed south. The seals will laugh when they see you float by. Not mad, the bear spit salmon from his mouth. Those puppies don't scare me. Be wolf am I. As Ulfilas poo pooed the taunts of seals, he dreamed of stars that spun like firework wheels. The bear sighed, wistful. Must be nice to fly. Then Abner laughed. I've seen you swim and hunt. You've got four pa paws, a nose, and two good eyes. Are you a bear or is it all a front? A mighty roar, a splash, the bear leapt high. Tail feathers in his mouth, he gave a grunt. The albatross soared up into the air, his beak turned to the southern hemisphere. Do you see what, do you see what, the, the, the bear wants, the, the bird wants the bear to go on the adventure, but sometimes bears are a little bit hard to get off their, their ice flows, right? So he said, look, you can do this. Right? You can go on this adventure, and, and, and you know how sometimes when people tease you a little bit, like, like good bit, like you can do this, don't be lazy. And so the bear is leapt up, and he's going to say, I'm going to do this, right? So what do you think the bear does now? Does he just stay there on his bark? Yep. I went really fast on thin ice before. You went very fast on thin ice. So he's up in the north, right, and there's going to be ice and cold up there. Ophelis' eyes flashed with the firmament. His hunter's heart was lit like winter fire. He took the plunge and swam through arctic currents in winding trails of icy cold sapphire. He paused along the way to check the ancient map above his head. The stars inspired. He took a breath, consulted with the sky. I wonder how much further, he opined. You realize, do you know all of these words that we're using in this poem? No, do you want to learn them? Do you want to have your mom or your big brother or your big sister help you read this? This is one of the things we're hoping that you do. It's like you're going to think about what's sapphire? If we say the water is like cold sapphire, what's sapphire? Isn't a sapphire like the color of a sapphire? It's the color of a sapphire. So what's a sapphire? Uh, a rock. It's a rock? Yeah. It's a gem, right? So you see how many gems? We've got crystals, we've got rainbows, we've got gems. This is a clue to what kind of treasure you're looking for, right? We said it's a pirate's treasure. Okay, so he's jumped in the water. And rubies. Can you think of a lot of different gems? You know where, diamonds? Where are you going to find lots and lots of beautiful gems? Where? In the sea. In a treasure chest, yeah? Underground, okay. In a cave. Oh, maybe they have to go to a cave in the, long, in the, in the sea. Yeah? You had your hand up. Where do, you, where do you find treasure? In the water. In the water? Okay, so we're going to look through all of creation for this gemstone. Yeah? And the water that Ulfilas has jumped, jumped into, it's really cold and blue. He's looking, at, he's looking up at the sky and looking at a map. What kind of map do you see in the sky? You know what kind of map you see in the sky? Stars, right? So we're going to have to navigate by the stars. So here he's gone. He's jumped into the water and he's on his adventure. A splash broke through his musings. Nothing there. Then a growl, a stern. What could it be? A sea monster? A seal? Another bear? He felt a tug, then could not move or see. Oh no, what's happened to him? Around him swarms of fish drew ever near. He swam against the draft. He tried to breathe. You all know what's happened, don't you? Because you're looking at the pictures. But inexorably was dragged away by unseen paws of fisher folk. Mayday! What's happened? There's a bear in the map. 
He's been caught in the net by, a bear. by other bears. Do you want to meet those other bears? What, yeah. Can you see what's ha What do you see those other bears doing? A bear's got caught in a net by other bears, and what do you, can you tell? Are those other bears? Are they are they having a good time? Are they they? What are they doing? They're fighting. They're fighting. Why do you think they're fighting? Because it's a hard catch and they can't pull it up. It's a hard catch and they can't pull it up. Very good. Do you think they know each other? These bears in the boat? Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. No. Who are they? Do you think they know each other? Brothers. They're brothers. What do brothers do? Fight. Fight. <laughs> There sat three bears in one small fishing ark. They'd cast their nets into the icy blue. Their fishing prospects were, had been looking stark. By tea time, they would argue what to do. Ivan, the eldest, bared his teeth and snark. I've never seen our dad catch fish with you. Bro Henry crossed his paws with a huff, wet paws with a huff, while Spencer cast the nets in quick rebuff. Okay, so we know their names now. They're Ivan, Henry, and Spencer. Yeah? That's something your brother used to do? Or you want to tell me? Okay, this is, this is what we hope you do when you're telling this story, that you think of things that have happened with your own family? Okay, so you can tell me your brother's story. I'm not sure I'm going to repeat that. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes brothers and sisters fight, yeah, or do mean things to each other. And here they are, they're, they've been fishing, and they've caught something, but they don't know what it is, right? It's a, bear. it's a bear. Okay, do you think they know that at first? No. Now, Spencer was the youngest of the three. I hope we can get home by dinner time. The other bears prepared to disagree when, lo, the whole boat rocked from side to side. The net! screamed Ivan, scrambling to retrieve. We caught a whale, cried Henry with great pride. That's not a fish, said Spencer of their catch. A great white bear emerged and full of wrath. How do you think the, white, the polar bear feels about being caught in that net? Bad. Bad. He's mad, right? He, he, was, could, he could have drowned. He could have drowned. He was swimming along and there they caught him in a net. A devil, a ghost. The young twins shrieked with fright. Red Ulfi fumed and climbed into the boat. He's just a bear, you big dopes, Ivan sighed. Can't you tell by looking at his coat? Hey, you, big guy, what brings you on the tide? You want to eat with us and share a loaf? Ulfilis growled and tossed his netted mire. I eat not till I see the rocks of fire. Right, when do you not eat? When, when are you going to not be eating? They, they said, you want to eat with us? You know what time of year this is? Are your parents saying you can't eat certain stuff right now? Oh, he was fasting for Lent. He's fasting for Lent. Very good. And he's fasting. Why is he fasting? Because he gave up stuff on Lent and he gave up probably eating too much food. He gave, he gave up stuff for Lent. He's given up because he's on a quest, right? So you're on a quest in Lent and you're hoping at the end. What are you going to hope? What do you hope you find at the end of Lent? Jesus! Okay, so here we are. Ophelia says, I, I eat not till I see the rocks of fire. What do you think the other bears think about that? Fiery rocks? No bread! The twins lamented. You swim in search of one big lump of coal? Too much honey's made his brain fermented. His head is filled with starry rock and roll. I'm fine, Ophelia roared, disoriented. I'm telling you about a worthy goal. The twins opined, sure, sure, you seek a rock. Now tell us how you rock around the clock. All right, so they think it's funny, right? It's like you're looking for fiery rocks and you're, you're not interested in eating. Guys, guys, guys. Okay, so here he is. He's going to try to convince them. What? I saw the picture. You saw the picture. Okay, so do you see how they want to hear the story too? It's the same on the back. Aren't they scared of him? Because they're like... Aren't they scared of him? They're on the other side. Well, they're a little nervous. Do you see? Do you see how yeah. they're, they're don't, they don't know what they've caught, right? At first they thought he was a ghost because he's white as a bear. He could be a devil. They don't know who he is. And he's going to have to convince them. What do you think he wants to convince them to do? Go on the quest with him, right? So how is he going to convince them to go on a quest? What, what might he do to convince them? To he's going to say, look, there's a treasure. Right? There's a treasure to hunt for. Okay? So here, here he goes. Guys, 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 just hear me out, cried Ulfie. 
You know the stars that shine here in the north? The albatross has eyes with which to see, high on the winds that from this realm go forth. He's found a chorus singing o'er the sea that flames with joy seen nowhere else on earth. Come with me now, let's find the seraphim whose singing burns the heavens from within. Right, so he's trying to explain, let's go find the angels. Let's go find the singing, the singing lights. Yeah, do you think they're persuaded that easily? Maybe we might need to work, do a little more work, right? Sarah, what? Asked Spencer with a snicker. I don't trust birds, quipped Henry with a frown. <laughs> All three brother bears began to bicker while on the bow, Ophelis stood his ground. There's no way we'll make it home for dinner. You want a shiny stone to fit your crown? I trust him, I've encountered. He's a bear. And you want us to follow him to where? I think, I think we need to stop now, kids. Thank you so much for your story, your, for giving me story time. And, and